Welcome to this presentation. I'm uh, quite excited that um, in you know co-working with the, uh, the presenters and the organizers of uh, .NET Day, we decided to come up with this talk, which has literally nothing to do with .NET, except that in .NET you can also use artificial intelligence. For example, at Microsoft we have um, you know ML.NET, right? So machine learning that you can program with .NET languages. And of course, we have also cognitive services, which are uh, AI services that you can use from pretty much any language you want, but there is an SDK specifically for .NET. So it is interesting for .NET developers to know about those things. And I think that bias anyway, if you are developing any kind of software, you should know a little bit about the basic concepts of AI and especially about the risks of AI and, uh, and bias. So, when I was um, younger, I read iRobot, which probably a lot of you did because Asimov is a great writer. And Asimov came up with uh, some ideas which already back then were kind of, you know, bothering humanity, I would say, or, or at least should have. Like what's going to happen when robots take over the world, right? And the first law was um, a robot may not injure a human. Okay, so that's uh, like the, the most important law. The robot should should do anything they can to avoid that humans can be harmed. Okay, and also they may not be inactive if they see that a human may come to harm. So the idea being that okay, if they I don't know somebody would uh, risk falling from a bridge, the robot should jump and try to catch them. For example, these kind of things. Then the second law is that a robot must obey orders given by humans. So there is always this idea that the, uh, the robot is here to serve the human, okay? And except, of course, if it contradicts the first law. So if a human would order a robot to go and kill another human, then the robot is allowed to, to, allow, uh, to, to ignore that, uh, that order. And finally, a robot must protect its own existence, all right, as long as it doesn't, uh, of course, contradict the first and the second law. And so those are questions that we have to ask ourselves today as well. Like, for example, think about a self-driving car and the moral issue that we can have if a self-driving car comes to an intersection and he has a choice, they have the choice between you know, swerving left and killing one person or swerving right and killing 10 people. What should they do, right? And then suddenly imagine that within the 10 people, well, sorry, that, that the person, the one person, because in, initially you think, well, okay, maybe they are going to, to go and, you know, try to avoid killing a, a large number of people. But then imagine that the person that they might kill is a child and then suddenly everything is different. And these type of moral issues are issues that we need today to deal with. And I want to remind you that self-driving cars have already killed people. Okay? We can maybe say, okay, it was human error, might be, but still, those problems exist. And, and of course, in our subconscious, we have all kinds of, you know, questions and issues, right? For example, war games, all right? War games, it was a computer which uh, almost harmed humans. There was a happy ending because it's a US movie, typical Hollywood movie, but he almost harmed human because he didn't quite understand what was expected from, from it, okay? And then we have Hal, and Hal killed people because he, it had some kind of a moral conflict. And then we have, of course, Terminator, no questions, it, it's here to kill everyone, so that's easy. So in our subconscious, AI tends to have a negative connotation or what happens today, and that's a real appliance, which is really in, in, in my kitchen, it's a rice cooker which uses AI to cook rice, which of course doesn't make any sense, okay? So we have this weird misunderstanding, and I think the public even more, this weird misunderstanding of what AI and machine learning and deep learning are. So machine learning is not easy, all right? You're going to be confronted when you learn with some graphs like that. It's uh, you know, a, a deep neural network, multi-layered neural network. And then you have some equations like that, so it's not super easy. So for us, which I imagine I have a majority of developers in the room, um, probably, right? Um, you know, those equations are a little bit scary because we learned that in school and then never use them any, anymore, ever, probably, until today, right? Where we start learning things like that. Also, machine learning is very different from programming. 
In programming, we have some code, and so we basically translate an algorithm into code, and then we input some data, and it's usually a, a small set of data, and then we get some answers. And it's very repeatable, very predictable. If you give the same set of data inside the same algorithm, you get the same answers every time. That's why we do unit tests, and we can assert an answer given a set of test data. In machine learning, we are going to switch things over. We are going to input answers. For example, if we do a custom vision service, we are going to say, this is a picture of a banana. I'm going to tell you now that's a picture of a banana. Okay? We have data, which we call training data. So we have multiple pictures, like apples, oranges, bananas. We tag them, that's the answers. And then we have a framework, which is going to learn from that, which is a topic of another talk. Um, learn from that, and eventually we get at the end an algorithm, which in machine learning we don't call an algorithm, we call a model. And then this model, which has been trained, we're going to input that into some code with a new set of data, which is a production data, and then we get predictions, we don't get answers, and mostly the reason behind that is that the, the, the amount of data that we're working with is huge for training those models. And small changes in the data can lead to big changes in predictions, okay? So it's very possible, and also don't forget the, the, the model may keep learning also. So it's very possible that if, if you input the exact same picture, picture twice, you're going to get different results at the end. And also the results we get are never yes or no, black and white, you know, they are always, I think it's a banana, I'm, I'm about 85% sure it's a banana, I'm not totally sure. Okay, so it's a, it's a little bit unsettling for us. It's all kinds of new concepts.